dear students today we look into another new topic in this video what is it it's about the role of ngos in sustaining environment see the government cannot alone cannot do it okay there are a particular set of people cannot do it the whole of whole lot of people have to come you know we have to have that responsibility and commitment only then we can help towards the betterment of the environment okay and here is these are these ngos actually there are thousands of ngos all around the world which work like this and what is this it is a non governmental organization either it is developed or it started by a single person like you know tarun bharat sang it was started by rajendra singh so he is the only person sole monarch of that he is called as the waterman of india who could bring so much of so many johads so that he completely transformed at uh, the dry land in rajasthan into a green water belt okay yeah so that is possible by a single person or a group of people also but they have a wider social aim it is not i do it for myself and i be i am benefited not like that it's for the society and in different areas some of these organizations would have a wider perspective whereas some of them would have only a specific aim and they will work towards it okay all right now we go to different ngos based on different topics like ngos for environment okay we start with that so these are some of the things like you have the world wide fund for nature okay so here what happens no they they insist on the conservation of biodiversity they want the wildlife to be protected okay so that is why you know even here we don't let the wild animals even the snakes to be killed by ordinarily they have to be legally taken by the wildlife rescue team and to be let out in a place where they can go around without being harmed okay so that is world wide fund for nature the next one is green peace again as this shows it is to protect the greenery and the green belt to protect the forest okay to prevent cutting down of trees all these comes under that friends of the earth these are some of the things that work for the environment and what do they do how do they do this they try to reduce the pollution levels so they would insist and they would propagate pollution control devices and other things they would conserve the biodiversity they would not allow the felling of trees so thereby they conserve the biodiversity not only that they also promote eco friendly technologies it's very important today so many machineries mach machine machinery equipments they try to just pollute the environment but here are some which promote eco friendly technologies and they stop degradation of resources so that's the main thing about the ngos for the environment now coming to the ngos for women's rights see today um, in a society like our country where women are always thought to be a little less and they are not capable they cannot manage things okay here is something coming up to fight for that okay it's not about gender equality but to give them the equal responsibility and see the capacity and the capability that they have the skill that they develop that's all this is about women's rights and here we have something called wwhr what does it stand for women for women's human rights so what are these people doing women are fighting for women's rights okay so that's this wwhr then you have ywca that is young women's christian association this is found in nearly more than 160 countries in the world and basically their aim is to uplift the women they have uh, occasional courses training courses like they have computer classes they have tailoring classes and they make the women of the less privileged or socially backward group they make them self sufficient or independent of any other person so okay so they are able to manage by themselves so that is the main work besides that they have shelter or residential places 
and uh, these residential places cater to the women who come and stay see supposing some women come from the village and they are in uh, they've got a job in a city and they do not know where to go and they have accommodation facility for such women not only that when there is an emergency a shelter is needed for a lady who is in danger who is in need and that is also done by this YWCA. The next one is Chetna. Chetna has been working since 38 years. Okay, you can see that here. 38 years of commitment. Mainly this is committed towards women and young people and children. But their main focus is on women. What they do is, that is the word Chetna itself explains. What does it say? It is a center for health. So they give main importance to the health of the women. Many women die during childbirth or they develop so many problems, complications after that because they neglect their health and there's nobody to care for them. Okay, then education. They have to be educated. Even basic education is necessary. Okay, training. They are trained in different ways and nutrition awareness. So all these things not only awareness of nutrition for themselves, but also for their children. So that is what this Chetna is about. Now we move on to NGOs which cater to the child welfare. Today in India, there are millions of children who are the underprivileged section. They don't have money to go to school. They can't afford to go to school. Leave alone school. They don't even have one meal a day. It is very, very sad, okay? So such children are catered to by NGOs like Milati, Cry, D-I-N, DIN, and Refuge, okay? Now, if you take this Milati, their main thing is it is utopian in nature. What does it mean? You identify the aspirations of the child. A child may like to become a doctor. A child may like to become a social worker. A child may like to become an environmentalist. Now, all these aspirations, these people, they act like a catalyst. They find out, okay, this child is capable. This child has this aspiration. This child has this desire. And put them along with or bond them along with people who are willing to sponsor. So this Milati organization is like a catalyst that goes around doing this business. So it is not actually they are bonding or linking the right links, just joining the dots correctly so that the child is benefited and the sponsors are also satisfied. What is fulfillment and what is satisfaction, isn't it? So that's what these things do. Not only that, this now when you take this cry, okay, that is child rights and you. Many times these children are deprived, okay, when there is a calamity that strikes. It's often the children who are sent in the forefront to sell goods and, you know, to take over when the father of the family, the head of the family goes away or is lost or is dead. Then the small children cater to all this. On the other day, I was reading in the paper that there was a child who was just nine years old and he's responsible because he has lost both his parents and he's the only one and he has a younger sister, five years old. Can you imagine the situation of such children? Now, these organizations, this is Dream India Network. This is Refuge Foundation. These are some of the organizations that come up. They identify such children who are in dire need of shelter, dire need of food. They don't have nutrition. They don't have shelter. And above everything, they don't have the safety. Children are abused in so many ways. And here are these organizations which come up with such things. They provide shelter, they provide good education, and they connect them to the right sponsors so that they are, their life is settled. Okay, so they are in the right path. So that is what these organizations are about. And because of this, the, in the glo global level, they would develop as good and responsible citizens. Okay, they will be committed and they'll be responsible instead of going into all kinds of wrong habits, you know, and getting hooked into wrong things. 
they are diverted and they are in the right path by these NGOs. So that's the role played by these NGOs. Now the last one is about the old people. We thought about the animals, the nature. We have thought about women, then children. But what about the old people? You know what? There is no one to take care of old people. The parents are left without anybody. Children are abroad, nobody to take care. Or even if they are there, they are not willing to take care of old people. But that is when organizations like Help Age India comes to the rescue. Okay, These organizations, they cater to the financially backward people. They give them, the, they supply them shelter and everything. They take them and give them all that they need, not only financially, they support them. Emotionally, see these old people are the ones who'd be waiting for somebody to talk to them, be waiting to spend time with somebody. So these people, they cater to them emotionally, financially, not only that, as you grow older, health issues are the main concern. So they need a lot of health care and that is also provided. And now this Help Age India is also spreading its tentacles towards the rural areas. Okay, not only urban but in the rural areas, in the remote pockets where old people are just left all by themselves. You know, they would be left to die by themselves. But such places, these kind of NGOs, they cater to. Okay, so these are the different kinds of NGOs that we learn they sustain, they are helpful in sustaining the environment. So as environmentalists, I would challenge you to take up something or other, something like this and be a blessing to the world. Okay, if you like this video, you can like, share and subscribe. Bye-bye.